Right now, from the culinary capital of Kentucky, it's Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs in front of a live studio audience. Hi everyone, I'm Tim Laird with Kevin Harnett. And Tim, we are excited to be in our kitchen theater here at Paris Town, where today we're talking steak and bourbon. I cut all of our steaks in house. And who better to show us some of those secrets than the executive chef from Steak and Bourbon, the restaurant. We're making ribeye and potatoes au gratin and beefed up pan pies. It's all ahead on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Kevin Harnett. We're here at Paris Town. We welcome you in for the show today. I'm alongside my broadcast partner, Tim Laird. This is going to be a lot of fun. I'll tell you what, and coming up is three of my most favorite things, steak, bourbon, yeah. and some great cooking secrets from Zach Wolf from Steak and Bourbon. Nice. Zach runs the kitchen at Steak and Bourbon, which is located in Louisville's Westport Village. We don't have to tell you about their specialties. They're all in the name. And Tim, you'll find plenty of other culinary treasures at Steak and Bourbon, from shrimp cocktails to crab cakes and pan pies. We're about to see those made before our eyes today. All right, it's time to get cooking, so let's bring on Zach Wolf from Steak and Bourbon. There he is. Hello, Zach. Good, Good to see you, brother. You. Good seeing you. Good you. Seeing we you. were just in your place not long ago. I had my nephew yeah, and his fiance. It was beautiful and delicious. Every time, I seem to get more and more impressed with what's going on there. Thank you. Yeah, we take great pride in what we do. We've actually, it's it, the business has been incredible. Um, you know, s since everything went down with the pandemic, and now that we've reopened, everything has been fantastic. It, it, it's a beautiful place. I'll tell you what. And the bar is great. I mean, everything about it, and the sides are phenomenal. I mean, the steak and bourbon are the are the stars. But I'll tell you what your sides are incredible yeah, yeah you got to have a good side to go with that steak right oh. you can have the best steak in the world but if the side doesn't match the quality of the steak you know what are you doing and, and i'll tell you one secret we're not going to show it today but i'll tell you what when you go there one side that i love is the corn brulee yeah it's it, it's a it, it's it's not a corn pudding it's no, a brulee right, yeah. right where it has that nice brown sugar topping crisp i take cream corn to a whole nother level <laughs> it, it's, it's exactly delicious it yeah yes. awesome all right, well, we start with the hand pies today. Yep, so first thing first, I just want to get my pan good and hot because we're actually going to start to, uh, to kind of caramelize these onions. And I'm going to start with beef fat. So a lot of restaurants will use olive oil or uh, vegetable oil. We use beef fat. Because beef fat. Beef fat. Right. Makes sense That's for steak. What, we're, we're, we're a steakhouse, so, um, and we actually go through a lot of beef fat there. We actually, um, in the hand pie dough itself, um, instead of using butter, like most people make pie dough, they use butter. We use beef fat. Huh. Secret revealed yep. right now. So we're just going to get that in there and get that kind of melted up. And then I'm going to start by caramelizing some of these really, really good white onions here. So while that's kind of caramelizing down, I'm going to start working on the hand pie dough over here. Okay. Um, and the thing with this, like I said, it's just a regular pie dough, um, except we take it to our level and we use beef fat. Um, same basic recipe, salt, flour, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of half and half, beef fat, and we just mix it together and knead it together until it creates this wonderful dough. Um, and then how we do it, we'll take an empanada press and put that dough in the mix here. Press that down and then just give this a really good press. Boy, I'll tell you what, that builds up the arms. You're Look right. at Chef Zach, I'm telling you that. <laughs> Heck with those weights. We'll just do the uh, press. <laughs> the empanada press. The empanada day. press. Will... <laughs> I say, once you start doing this, we do probably 350 to 400 of these oh, a week. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Give that it's to it's, a, it's guy, a lot right? of work. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Look at that. Perfect. Nice. Dine Company has these available too if you want your own. Um, it's where you can. Yeah, that's where yeah. you can go to get your next one. Yeah, so uh, we, we use Dine Company a lot for the restaurants. They supply like our glassware, all of our plateware is purchased through Dine. That's a great local store as well. And it's great for home use too. Exactly. I mean, you, you can cook like the professionals with all the professional equipment you can get at Dine Co. So I, that's what I love about them. I'm like a kid in a candy store when they go there. Oh, I want one of these, I want one of these. So I'm going to go ahead and add in this beef here. And again, we're just going to kind of cook this in. And it's going to pick up all those flavors of the onion. Exactly. And the beef fat that's in there already, so you're going to have a really nice 
Yeah, so we're just layering, we're just layering flavors. That's, that's what I'm all about, just layering those flavors up. And it is shaved so thin that it's not going to take long to cook. Exactly. And something too, you're only looking to kind of just caramelize and kind of brown this up because it's going to get baked again inside of the empanada. All right, so this is the mixture that's going to go into the, um, the hand pie. Is yeah. there anything else that has to be Yes. Cooked? So What else do we have? So in this mix, we're actually going to add in a little bit of Gouda Mornay. So we make our own Mornay sauce. Um, and that's just a classic mother sauce. Starts with uh, milk, onions, and then we add in a little bit of Parmesan cheese and a little bit of smoked Gouda. Okay. Um, so in this mixture, we're going to add in this Mornay sauce. All right. And then on top of that Mornay sauce, we're going to add in some more Jack cheese. Okay. Ooh, gives it that nice creaminess. Exactly. Yeah. Nice. Love that. And then, of course, you know, salt and pepper. I like the way they measure all these chefs, you know? It's <laughs> like, you know, I'm just going to do this and that. And... So, and then once this is all good and mixed up, we're going to put this in a mixing bowl, and we're actually going to put this in the refrigerator and let this come down until it's nice and cold. Okay. Um, because if it's too hot, when you go to bake the hand pies, it's actually all going to leach out, right? You don't want that. So. so that is the mixture. That goes in. We're going to put that in the refrigerator. Yep. Perfect. Exactly. Good time for us to take a commercial break, Tim. Let's do it. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll show you what it looks like chilled, and we will stuff the uh, hand, hand pie. pie. And we're going to have a great treat when we come back right here on Secrets of Bluegrass Chef. Stay with us. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. We are here at Paris Town. We're cooking with Chef Zach Wolf over at Steak and Bourbon. And as we went to commercial break, we had the mixture of what we were putting in the refrigerator to stuff our hand pies with, and this looks amazing. We're just going to take a little bit of this hand pie mix, and we're going to put it right here in the center. And we're just going to build this up just kind of like building an empanada, right? Not too much. You don't want to overstuff it because then, again, it's all going to leach out. You want those flavors to all kind of be contained inside there. And as this bakes, this nice cheese mixture is going to melt and give you a good sauce inside of it. So now we're just going to take and fold. Here, here's the hand part of the hand pie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're just going to take and fold these over. Like I said, make sure we stuff Did you give it me my hand, Tim? Yeah, I will. <laughs> <laughs> and that's key. You want to crimp the sides so all that goodness stays inside of it. So I'm just going to kind of flatten this out a little bit, make sure these, this edge kind of appears Seals. here. Yep. Yeah. And then we can go back through and actually kind of just twist this up. You can say this is handcrafted. <laughs> Takes a lot of time and a lot of love to make these. We're going to put those on just a greased baking sheet. And then to get a really good deep golden color on them, we're going to take a little bit of egg wash. Mm. And we're just going to brush this with a little bit of egg wash. Just one side, and then I have a little bit of Maldon salt, just a little bit of coarse salt, just to kind of give it a little bit of texture, a little bit of bite. And that gets baked 350 degrees for about 15 minutes or so until okay. they get nice and golden brown. Beautiful. Yep. Through the Love magic that. of TV, we can yep. show you what a finished product looks like. Yeah. There you go. You know what they call that? GBD, golden brown delicious. <laughs> Look at that, how good that looks. It looks amazing. Yeah. So for here, we're just gonna sit, plate it. Oh, these are nice and warm still. So we serve this with, uh, it's a mint chimichurri that we use fresh herbs. Uh, it's mint, parsley, basil, we grind that down with a little bit of lime juice, salt and pepper, and some jalapeno to kind of give it a good bite. Um, and then we also make a red pepper sour cream to go with it. And we take uh, whole red peppers, roast them until they're nice and uh, dark, seal them up, peel them, um, and then mix them with sour cream, a little bit of onion powder, and garlic powder. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah. And there you have and it. There you have the it. hand pies from Steak and Bourbon. They look delicious. Well, the good part is we're not finished sharing the secrets, Tim. No, I think we got a big steak coming up. <laughs> we can't wait to learn the secrets on that. Zach Wolf from Steak and Bourbon sharing them when we come back on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Stay with us.
Tim Laird with you again on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs here in our kitchen theater in Paris Town. If you haven't discovered Paris Town yet, you've got to come check it out. It's a historic Louisville neighborhood where Louisville Stoneware was born. Now, as Stoneware and Company, the showroom is full of everything from plates and platters to barbecue sauces and even bourbon. And Tim Paris Town is also home to our kitchen theater. And today we're cooking with Chef Zach Wolf from Steak and Bourbon. You saw the amazing hand pies that were made. Now we're transitioning to this beautiful steak. Hold that up a second. Yeah. Show that off. That baby is nice. <clears throat> How about that? Who's yeah. hungry? Awesome. I see not only that wonderful steak, but what's in front of me happens to be maybe my favorite side it of is. Steak and Bourbon. And that's the potato al gratin. It is our Whoa. And, and you promise it's, it's easy to make if we want to do this. It's extremely easy, yes, yeah. Yeah, this is one of those dishes that you can kind of uh, prep in advance and then bake, right? You know, like when you get home, it takes about an hour and a half or so to bake. Um, but as far as prep goes, it's, it's not very many ingredients and it's quick and easy put together. That's what I like, quick and easy. Let's get started. So first thing we want to do um, on a baking dish, make sure you know oven's preheated, of course, but on a baking dish, we just want to take a, about a tablespoon of butter um, and just liberally coat this pan with butter, right? Do not be shy with this butter. Now, set that to the side in a mixing bowl. We're going to take two and a quarter cups of heavy cream. That's heavy. Very heavy cream. Two and a quarter cups of half and half. Three tablespoons of salt. Two tablespoons of black pepper one teaspoon of nutmeg, and then one teaspoon of chopped fresh thyme. Now, that's our liquid mix. We're gonna let this sit and let those flavors kind of combine for a second. And while that's sitting, we're gonna start layering this pan with sliced layer. potatoes. This is just a thin slice. Just, thin just a slice. slice. Yeah. Like on a mandolin? Yep, okay. exactly. Yeah. Which you can yeah, get a dime and company. So we got that first layer down. We're gonna take half of this mixture and just pour it into this pan. And then I have shredded Monterey Jack cheese and shredded Gruyere. And again, half and half. We're just gonna sprinkle this on top of these potatoes. And both of those are a nice melty, gooey cheese, right? Exactly, yep. That's just gonna bake in between all of these layers of these potatoes. And then we're gonna go back and do another layer of sliced potatoes and kind of work in a crisscross fashion so that way you're getting that, that full coverage area as you can. You don't want any spots without potatoes. And we do it all over again. Do it all over again. There it goes. And even though some of the liquid, the cream may fall to the side, a lot of those spices are staying right with the potato. Yep, exactly. And we're actually gonna cook this uncovered first. Well, we gotta have some more cheese on no, top. Let's add a little more of that. Of course. We'll cook this uncovered first, so that way the top gets nice and golden brown. And then we're actually going to put some foil on it and continue well, I can, to cook I can it. actually smell that cream. And it really is just unbelievable with the salt and pepper and everything. Yeah. Wow. And that's it. And that's and what goes in the oven. So we usually do um, about 35 to 45 minutes uncovered to get that nice golden brown at 350 degrees. We pull it out cover it in foil, then it goes back in for another 35 to 45 minutes, depending on until you take a knife and insert it in. And if it goes in cleanly, no resistance, it's ready to go. Nice. All right. The potatoes al gratin. Nice. Yeah. That is sort of easy. I like that. Okay. So we're going to put these in the oven. Okay. Here's our magical oven. Yeah. Oh, look, it's oh, done. Yeah. Ding. Oh. <laughs> right. And then once it comes out, that's what it's going to look like. That nice golden brown color, kind of oh. that crispy edge right there. And the trick with this, you don't want to cut it and serve it as soon as it comes out of the oven. You want to let sense. that rest. Because you, you want, want all those, yeah. Exactly. It congeals. Something like that. Right. Is that right? <laughs> that's, uh, Tightens yeah. up. Look at you, Kevin. Well, I mean. So while that's resting, I'm going to go ahead and start working on searing this steak. Excellent. Right? Okay. So I'm going to start with a little bit of beef fat in there and get that good and seasoned up. And then we have our own steak seasoning. Um, we've come up with this over time. Um, it's a mixture of kosher salt, black pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and a little bit of cayenne. 
and the cayenne gives you a little bit of heat that helps open up those taste buds. When you bite into that steak, you get that really good, that savory sensation. And how about that? They just shared the secrets to their own little rub that they yeah. have. I love that. Let me get that in that pan. Oh, you can smell that you immediately. Smell it. It's an instant. instant. Smell it. Immediately. Oh, <laughs> I know. I mean, that is a nice steak. This is my favorite cut of steak, right? I mean, fat is flavor. That's where all of that real good flavor comes from. So that's why I love ribeyes, personally. Uh, a lot of people like fillets because it's more of that leaner meat. Um, but for me, of course, as you can see, I like fat in a steak. And, and the bone-in ribeye, I think, gives more flavor, too. Because exactly. you have that bone that's in there, and it just adds more flavor to the, to the steak. Yep. So I'm with you on that. Hey, we come from the same cut. <laughs> <laughs> And we're just going to let this get a good sear on one side. And once that one side gets a good sear, we're going to flip it. So now we're going to flip that so you can see that beautiful there, caramelization oh, beautiful. on the outside. That's that crust. That's yeah. Delicious flavor. Exactly. Oh. So while that other side's getting that good crust put on it, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of garlic in here. And this garlic's actually going to season the oil, season that beef fat. So whole cloves. Yeah, whole right cloves. In the pan. Yeah and whole sprigs of thyme as well. We're gonna kinda put that up here on the top. Just a little time. We've got time. <laughs> <laughs> and again, what we're doing is seasoning the oil. We're not necessarily seasoning the steak per se, we're seasoning the oil, and that oil is actually gonna start seasoning the steak. Well, you and can smell that thyme right away. Oh, I mean, man. It's a complimentary flavor. And I love that technique, because uh -oh. you're actually seasoning Infusing. the steak with, the, with that sauce that's just beautiful. Can you all smell that at all out there? Man, it's amazing. <laughs> right. I'm just going to keep working this oil around, making sure I hit that bone. And you see this is the beautiful color that's put on that steak. That is gorgeous. All right, so now I'm going to turn this off and just kind of let this rest for a second. While that's resting, <laughs> I'm going to take it to a whole nother level, and we make an herb compound butter. This is garlic, lemon juice, parsley, a little bit of thyme, a little bit of rosemary, and tarragon. And I'm just going to set this over that steak. Oh, wow. Again, we're just layering those flavors. I'm just going to let that sit and start to kind of just coat that steak. Oh. While that's doing that, I've already cut the au gratin here. So I'm just going to slide in, get a big chunk of that au gratin. You can see all those layers there. Oh, yes. Put that right there on the plate. Oh, Pop my. that with a little bit of fresh chive. Right. And that just kind of gives it that good vibrant onion flavor every once in a while. I'm gonna take this beautiful bone-in ribeye. Oh my gosh. God, that's gorgeous. Tim, I have no idea what you're gonna eat. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. How so, do you wow. like that? Steak, potatoes, at steak and bourbon. Nice. I'll tell you what. Zach, you did reveal the secrets to your gratin, and it was very easy. Yes. Even though it looks very complicated, that was wonderful. The steak is incredible. Steak and bourbon. Easy to find. Tell people where you're located in Westport. We are located on Westport Road at the corner of Westport and Her Lane, uh, right in the Westport Village Shopping Center. We are literally right there on the corner. Can't miss us. It's a black and gold emblem and a gray building with a red awning. So stand out. We hope you'll go if you've not been. Try some of the secrets that Zach shared today. Zach Wolf, thank you so much. Absolutely, guys. Appreciate thank you very much. Here. Thank you, Zach. Thank you. All right, we appreciate Zach being here. We appreciate each of you being here today. If you'd like to be a part of our studio audience, it's easy to do. Log on to mintjuleptours.com. For Tim Laird, I'm Kevin Harnett. We'll see you next time on another episode of Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs.